What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to compare different compression algorithms in Python, and we're going to learn how to compress and decompress files. So let us get right into it. All right, so we have a couple of core Python packages that we can use to compress and decompress data using different algorithms. And in this video today, I want to compare three of them in terms of speed and in terms of effectivity. So how much they compress the data, how small the compressed file or the compressed data is. And we're going to compare the three algorithms, LZMA, gzip and bzip2 or bz2 in this video and then at the end we're also going to take a look at how we can compress files using lzma and how we can decompress files using lzma so what we need to do for this is we need to import time so that we can time everything and we're also going to import of course lzma we're going to import gzip and we're going to import bz2 so I'm not going to go into the technical details of uh, what these compression algorithms do in the background. I have a couple of videos where I, in general, explain algorithms from scratch. But when I do a fundamental video, I like to just cover them from a high level perspective. If you want to know how these work behind the scenes in a detailed way, let me know in the comment section down below. If there is enough demand, I usually make a in-depth from scratch video as well. Um, but we're going to now just compare the effectivity and the speed. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate some sample data here. It's going to be a simple string, uh, but it's going to be a byte string. So it's going to have a B in front of the quotations. And we're going to just say this is some sample data. And we're going to take this times uh, 99 or 990,000. Uh, just some large numbers so that we have a lot of data and then we can just print the size of that so the length um, let's call this original data size is going to be length of data come on i'm still struggling with my new keyboard here uh, so we print the original data size and then what we do is we start a timer or we keep track of the time by saying time dot time. Now, of course, we could also do something like perf counter, but I'm just going to go with time now. So end time time. And in between, I'm going to now compress this data using LZM8. So I'm going to say compressed underscore data underscore LZM8 is going to be equal to LZM8 dot compress data. And uh, yeah, then we can just print here and minus start. So you can see that this is the original data size and this is now the time it took to um, this is the time it took to to compress the data. Now we also need to have the data size. So what we can do here is we can say print length of compressed data LCMA. And then you can see that this is now the data size for this. And of course, we can also decompress again. So I can say print and then or maybe I shouldn't print. I'm not sure if I should print the data, but we can try LZMA dot decompress and then compress data LZMA. And then you can see we get what we had in the beginning, obviously. So it's lossless compression and it's quite good because we compress it down to to just 3612 characters or bytes in this case, uh, from this size here, which is quite larger. Um, so we're going to do this now with gzip and bzip2 as well. So we're going to say start actually, let me just copy this here. And now we're going to say compress data gzip, then we're going to say gzip compress gzip and you can see now here we have um, a larger size, but it works faster. And then we can also copy this now. And we can do the same thing with bzip2. 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 And you will see that bzip2 takes quite, uh, quite a long time. So longer than the other two, uh, much longer, actually. Uh, but it also ends up having the best compression here in this case. 
Uh, we can, of course, play around here with different data with uh, more characters or something like that. But at the end of the day, this is always uh, this one is always going to be the fastest with the uh, with the worst compression. This is going to be quite fast with a very good compression. And this is going to be quite slow with the best compression, uh, theoretically. But I think the best trade off here, at least for this data is LGMA, because it gives you a very good compression and quite fast. And of course, if I increase the size here, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to to Yeah, probably going to take too long. But yeah, you can see this is now the fastest, but a pretty, pretty bad compression here. Now we just needed 2.5 seconds for uh, a decent compression and now BZ2 will take a lot more time as you can see. But once it's done, it's probably going to have, I assume the best compression here. I'm not sure if we should wait for it because I don't know if the runtime scales exponentially here or not. Um, but actually it should be if it scales linearly, it should be 10 times longer. Roughly. I guess. There you go. 34 seconds. Uh, and we get the best compression. So yeah, this one is probably the most effective one, but this one is the best trade off. And this one is the fastest, I would say. Um, what we can also do now, at least for I mean, we can do that probably for all of them. But for gzip, I'm going to show an example, we can also specify the compression level. So for gzip, uh, actually, this is already the best compression level, but I can also say compress level uh, equals one. And in this case, uh, it's going to be even faster and it's going to perform even worse. So I think, uh, let me just compare this here, gzip2, if we have one and if we have nine, nine being the default, as far as I know. Yeah, so nine is better compression, one is worse compression, but one is uh, even though now we're tracking a time for both, but one is faster, of course. So yeah, this is the comparison. Now, let's look at how we can actually use this to compress and decompress files using LZMA because I would say from this comparison here, LZMA seems to be the best uh, choice for for this sort of data. Um, and what we can do now is we can open up a text file, we can say file.txt. And we can add some content here. Hello world. This is my file. And then of course, we can just copy paste this a couple of times so that we have some size here. And then we can delete the data, we can unimport gzip and bzip2. And uh, what we can do now is we can actually just say with open uh, file txt as f in so it's input file and lzma dot open file dot xz which would be the compressed file type in writing bytes mode and of course this one has to be opened in reading bytes mode uh, because you can also do this not only on text files but also on executables for example and then f out and what we do then is we just say f out write f in read. And you can see that we don't call compress, but this LZMA open already basically says, okay, whatever I get to write into this will be compressed. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, how we do the compression into a file. And this then results in this file here, we can open this up in files, we can see this one has three kilobytes, this one has 116 bytes, so it's compressed. Um, and I'm not sure actually if Yeah, I mean, no. Yeah, actually, we do have the file in here. Um, so so this actually creates an archive, we compress it into an archive. Um, and then what we can do is we can say with open, or actually with LZMA open now first, because we're opening the archive, we're opening the compressed format file.xz in reading bytes mode s f in this time, and then just open, then we're going to create a new file, uncompressed.txt in writing bytes mode s f out. And now we do 
exactly the same thing. We just copy this line, but now the LGMA open is going to happen in the read. So it's going to decompress everything it gets from the from the compressed file. And this results in our uncompressed txt being our original file. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.